let's go ahead and get started on day four of the successful mindset successful pianist so first of all i want to congratulate everyone who has been doing their homework um i am really enjoying watching the homework come in um, some of you have been posting it in the Facebook group, which is absolutely perfect. Some of you send it directly to me in um, Messenger or into the um, email. I can't think this morning. <laughs> so I want to say thank you for posting your homework. Thank you for sending me your homework. I want to congratulate you because this is where we see results actually happen is when you implement what you're studying not just gathering all this information but it's what you do with the information that you gather and that's where the results happen is in the implementation so today um, we're going to be talking about the strategies of becoming a performing pianist without burnout and we're also going to be talking about the one habit that all performing pianists have and how you can develop this um, habit as well so if you are here with me live I would like for you to hashtag live in the chat box. If you're catching this on replay in Facebook, if you're catching this on replay in YouTube, I would like to encourage you to put hashtag replay in the comment section under the video in the Facebook group or even in the um, YouTube channel. So I want to congratulate and I want to acknowledge everyone who participates um there are more giveaways to win for doing homework uh i will be announcing the winner of the free four um one-on-one sessions with me i will be announcing that tomorrow in the q a call um so there are a few more giveaways to give away for doing the hashtag live, the hashtag replay, and also completing your homework and posting that. So I want to invite each and every one of you to stay until the end of today's session. Uh, I have a brilliant announcement that I'm going to make at the end of the session. Um, today that I'd like to be sure that you all stay for. So what is the biggest win that you have seen in your piano practice so far? Think about what that biggest win is and write that down. And before we really get started on today's session, I would like to go ahead and encourage you to write down your goal. I am so happy and I'm grateful now that it is whatever date and I am playing whatever song. So go ahead and write down your goal. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump into the strategy session. And one thing that I've learned from going from being burned out to being a productive pianist, a performing pianist again, is that working harder is not the answer. Learning tons of strategies is also not the answer. Simple strategies, you're gonna wanna find one or two um, that can be used successfully. And a lot of times I'll be in with uh, one of my students in a coaching call and they'll be like, what do I need to do this week? And I will tell them, I want you to do this, and I want you to do this. And they said, but we did that last week. And yes, we did that last week, but those strategies work. We don't want to have 500 different strategies, so many different strategies that we are lost. We don't want to have 
oh, I need to do this, and I need to do this, and I need to do this, 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 and I've got, by the time it's over, I've got a million things that I'm trying to do, and I'm not doing any of them good. So simple strategies, find a few strategies, one, two, three, that you can use successfully. And 95% of your success is found in your mindset. It's not found in your strategies. And that's a very, very common misconception because most people are like, well, I've got to learn these strategies in order to be successful. Yes, you need strategies, but mindset is more important than strategies. So simple strategies is what we're looking for. If your mindset is programmed to overwork, then it does not matter how many strategies you know, what strategies you know, you're going to overwork and then burn out. You will self-sabotage your results. So the strategies that helped me change my life forever. There are three ways um, to playing the piano in this world. Only three. And I'm going to share those with you. The first way is what most people do. The first way is most people just practice for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours on end. 96% of people do this. Most of the time, they will just go all in practicing. There's nothing wrong with going all in practicing, but they'll practice for hours and hours and hours at a time, and then they burn out and they walk away. Um, they spend hours practicing the piano. Most of them have the wrong mindset also whenever they're spending hours and hours and hours trying to practice the piano. Most are practicing the piano and they're like, I will never get this. This is not working. You know, and so they're practicing. Some learn a few things. A few of them even become successful performers, but most of the people that just practice for hours and hours and hours, most of them burn out. And I hear students come to me and they're like, oh, I practiced three hours the other day. I go, okay, great. And that is great. If you have the time to practice three hours, that's great. However, be sure that you're not just practicing for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on end and burning yourself out. Um, so after that method, we've also got the structured practice time. Only about 3% of pianists do this. And this is one of my favorites. Because what it does, it helps you structure your time at the piano where you're learning the concepts that are most important. And building upon those concepts so that you're able to level up to the next level of piano quickly and efficiently instead of taking years. And I have a road map. And my road map is structured and it says okay you need to learn these concepts this week and then the next week you need to learn these concepts this week so if you're learning piano by yourself that roadmap is very very helpful as well as our um, practice structure cheat sheet that practice structure cheat sheet helps you, you know, I need to spend 10 minutes on theory. I need to spend five minutes on technique. I need to spend so many minutes per song. So basically what you do is you have your theory, you have your technique, you have all of this, 
And so you have these songs that you're working on and you take an hour and you divide all of that into your hour and you spend so much time on it each and every day. This helps to ensure that you don't get burnout and you're touching each and every one of your songs. Um, so this is very, very helpful. Um, I have made up my mind that as a thank you for everyone that is um, for everyone that is joining me live, everyone that's joining me on the replays, everyone that has been sending me your homework, um, as a thank you for doing this class, I am going to send that roadmap and that structured um, that structured practice time cheat sheet. I'm going to send that to you free this week um, for participating in this masterclass. Okay, so now um, another strategy. The other way that you can learn piano is something that we call the RLP method. And really only 1% of pianists use this particular method effectively. So this is the read, listen, and play strategy. Now by itself, it's a very, very little use. Um, but when it's mixed with the structured practice time, you become absolutely unstoppable. And a lot of people will agree that when you read through a piece of music, like you sit down and read a book, but you just sit down and read a piece of music, and then you listen to someone else play it. Um, you know, think of YouTube, um, wherever you get your music, and you can sit down, someone else can play the piece, and you can sit down and read along. When you do that, and then you play through that piece of music yourself. That is the strategy that's so, so, so very helpful. When you mix it with the structured practice time, you become absolutely unstoppable because you're not just learning a song. You are mixing it with the concepts that you're learning as well. And so it's important that you find someone who can teach you and help guide you on the read, listen, play method, as well as the structured um, practice method. If you are a current student of mine, you know that we kind of do this on our one-on-one -on -one sessions, and that is, you know, do this this week. And then you've also got my videos that you can listen to while reading through the music. Um, so that's something I love to use. And my strategies that I use that's given me so much more time with my family and friends while still being able to keep this performance repertoire is, of course, the structured practice time and the RLP method. Both of these have helped with the combination of the practice, um, the proper mindset tools as well. Whenever you have the mindset tools, the structured practice time and the RLP method, what happens is that gives you the quantum leap. And these are the structures that I teach my students most of them experience a quantum leap in their piano playing and performances. So I've got two questions that I want to ask each and every one of you. Which strategy are you on right now? And which strategy would you like to learn? Are you just spending hours at the piano, just practicing for hours trying to learn your songs? Or do you structure your practice time? And do you use the read, listen, play method? What strategy are you on right now? And what strategy do you want to learn? 
Awesome. Brilliant. So the next question. Um, who here, and if you're on the replay, uh, feel free to uh, put yours in the chat box as well. But who here already uses the RLP method and the structured practice method, but no matter how hard you work or how many strategies you know, it seems like you just keep hitting a ceiling in your piano playing. You're not going where you want to go in your piano playing. Maybe sometimes you might even blame yourself and say, dude, what's wrong with me? So I want to explain exactly what's going on so that you never beat yourself up for this and you understand that it's only your psychology. When you change your psychology, you will see the changes in your results. So, that brings us to our little stick figure. Can you see this? Um, let me know in the chat. Yes. Okay, brilliant. So, this is a picture of the subconscious mind and cybernetics. So, this is a little picture of the mind. We have the conscious mind up here. We have the subconscious mind, and we have this little body, right? So let's say that you are that you have a goal here of playing your dream song, whatever that is. Let's say it's for Elise, Rock Pontonov's Piano Concerto Number 2, whatever. Just so we have something. Let's say it's for Elise right here. So let's say that right now you're only playing at a high intermediate level. Let's... Let's say it's Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto. You're playing at a high intermediate level, low advanced level, and you're wanting to play this high advanced song. So here in the conscious mind is where that goal is. It's right there. All the strategies you know are in the conscious mind. The problem is that this part of the mind controls only 5% of the ideas that you get and execute effectively. It only controls 5% of the actions that you take and the results that you get. Now this bottom part right here of the mind is called the subconscious. Now the subconscious mind controls 95% of the ideas that you get and execute successfully. All the results that you get around the piano are right here in the subconscious mind. So this is where you have the paradigm. This is your habits and thoughts around the piano. How do you know what your paradigm is and where it's fixed? So just look over the past year at your results at the piano. The subconscious mind, it just kind of acts like an autopilot. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you add to the conscious mind or how much you repeat your goals. If your habit around playing the piano are stuck at an intermediate level and you just can't seem to learn what you need to learn to go to a higher level of piano, your mind will sabotage the strategies that you're working on up here and say, oh, who do you think you are? You can't do that. Or you'll find yourself just working hard, 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 hard and not seeing any results that you want. And what ends up happening is you just burn out. So here's the solution. We are going to program the subconscious mind for certain results. When you learn how to think from the person who already is playing those songs that you want to play, having the habits of the person who is already playing those songs, guess what? You're going to shift your paradigm and you will start to see massive shifts in your piano playing. So honestly, there's nothing wrong with you at all. 
you just don't know how to change the programming, how to change that paradigm, if you will, so you can learn those songs that you want to play. So once you learn to reprogram it, that's where you're going to learn how to walk the walk, talk the talk. So this brings us, we're right at 730, this brings us to the habit that all successfully performing pianists have. And almost every successful person has developed this habit as well. And what is this habit? If you develop this habit, will you become successful at the piano as well? If you develop this habit, I can promise that you'll become successful at a lot of different aspects of your life. Every aspect of your life will change, and this habit is so worth developing. And I wished I could get a drum roll, <laughs> because this habit is decision making. Now that probably catches you off guard and you may be wondering why on earth is it decision making? Successfully performing pianists make decisions differently than 96% of the rest of pianists. They think differently and they make decisions differently. We have to think differently and we have to make decisions differently. So yesterday we talked about fear here in our master class and in the video that I shared of Will Smith, he said that the best things in life are on the other side of fear. So here's a spin on that that my mentor said and she said God placed the best things in life on the other side of life changing decisions. And whenever I heard her say that, I thought it was absolutely awesome and absolutely correct. Because these life changing decisions are going to be the ones that impact your life. They're going to impact your piano playing. They impact your goals at the piano. They impact your performing. And they also impact your composing. So only three to four percent of people make life changing decisions successfully. And most people go back on that. So what is the right thing to do when a life changing decision comes to you? And how to make the right decision when it comes to your goal. So on the other side of the life changing decision, there is your goal. So how do successful pianists, successful people in general, how do they make these decisions? So if you're not familiar with Napoleon Hill, um, Napoleon Hill went out and he studied, um, I think it was 25 of the world's most influential people of that time. And he wrote a book on their habits and the way that they made decisions. Um, he basically made he wrote a book about their paradigms. What makes successful people um, different from just regular people? And he wrote this book about their paradigms, their habits and their beliefs. And this is what he come up with. He said successful people make decisions quickly and they rarely change their mind, if ever. So a personal story about making decisions, whenever it comes to making decisions, I do my best not to waste a lot of time. And whenever it comes to hiring a mentor to help me, I almost always know immediately 
who it is that I'm going to hire, who it is I'm going to work with. Um, so when I want to learn a song, I sit down just like I have asked all of you to do, and I make a list of songs, and then I find that song that just really inspires me, and I make the decision quickly to do it. I don't go back and forth and, oh, what do I think? Well, you know what? I think I might. No, I think I'm going to go back. Oh, no, I'm going to go back. I don't waste time on A-type goals and B-type goals that we talked about on Monday. I go after what I want. My heart really wants to play this song. So I am going to put in the time, I'm going to put in the work, and I'm going after the song. And so that's the way that I make decisions, especially whenever it comes to um, learning songs at the piano. So um, I'm going to tell you a little story about how I hired my very first mentor. Now, I know she's not really um, on the topic of piano, but I feel that you'll probably be able to relate to this a little bit. And my first mentor, my first business mentor, was Donna Parto. And if you've never read any of her books, um, Become the Woman I Want to Be, is a good one becoming the woman God wants me to be is also another good one um, so I I had um, went to work one day and I really wanted something to drink so I got in my purse and I got just a few dollars worth and of change and I ran downstairs and I went into this little gift shop and her book was there. And I just felt like I needed to buy that book. But I did not have the money to buy that book that day. I would have had to gone back up to my desk, get my purse, come back down, buy the book, and uh, no. So um, I eventually, a few days after that, I went and I bought that book and I read the book and I got on her email list and I was following her um, and so she was doing this seven days to freedom it's about breaking out of your job and starting your own business and all of that so I told my mother because they were going to um, I think it was Curacao they were going somewhere Costa Rica, that's where it was. They was going to Costa Rica. And I told my mother, I said, I would absolutely love to do this. I said, but, you know, I'm just finding out about it, and they're already in Costa Rica. And my mother said, well, what about next year? As soon as this comes up next year, you need to go. I said, really? She said, yeah, you need to go. So I made the decision right then that I was going to go the next time it became available. Well, fast forward a year later, I get an email about going to Curacao at that time. And so I call my mom and I said, oh my God, mom, I got the email. I got the email from Donna Porto and they're signing people up to go to Curacao. I just love to do that. She said, good. I, I take it you've already applied? I said, uh, no. She said, well, go apply. I said, but I don't know if I have the money. I don't know if I have this. I don't know if I have that. I don't, oh my God. She said, well, you're not going to find out until you apply. Apply. So I went and I applied for mentorship with Donna Porto. And I got accepted. I found out exactly how much money I needed, when it needed to be paid. I got it all paid. 
Now, did I go to Curacao? No, because COVID came and shut it all down. So I ended up going with uh, Donna Parto and we went to um, Ireland instead, which I think was much better anyways. Uh, but my mother was able to help me make that decision quickly. Now, my mother also knew what my goal was. My mother knew my goal, and she was helping me make that decision from my goal. Because if I would not have made that decision then, I would not have grown into half the person that I am now. I needed to make that decision and I needed to make that decision then. My mother understood that. Now, how do people make decisions? How do most people make decisions? Now, if you're an unsuccessful person, you probably make decisions very slowly because you don't want to make a mistake. It's fear of failure and it keeps you paralyzed. And so what ends up happening is unsuccessful people go back and forth and back and forth with their decisions. And this is called analysis paralysis. A lot of unsuccessful people ask other people to make their decisions for them. Now, successful people normally only have a few trusted people that they will ask um, if they need help in making a decision. But most successful people, they make that decision quickly. They make that decision from their goal, and they rarely change their minds. So this is just a moment of self-reflection. No judgment. How do you make your decisions? Do you make them quickly and then stick to it? Or do you make your decisions slowly and analyze and maybe ask other people, hey, what do you think I should do? Asking other people is not exactly a great idea because most other people are not going for your goal. Most of them probably have never achieved anything close to your goal. So to ask them would probably not be a good idea. It would probably be equal to asking a plumber how to roof a house. He may have a few ideas, but the deal is, is he is a plumber. That's what he does. He does not roof houses. Or asking a roofer how to put in the plumbing. There may be a few people that can do all of it. They're jack of all trades. But if someone is just, they, all they do is plumbing, don't ask them how to roof. And life-changing decisions, whenever you're coming to a life-changing decision, and you know it is the right decision, because if you make that decision, your goal's right here. Whenever you come to those life-changing decisions, you will always be scared. The paradigm does not want you to make that decision because that paradigm, there's my, the paradigm that's right here in the subconscious mind does not want you to make that life-changing decision. Why? Because it wants to stay comfortable. So the paradigm will block you with what? Worry, doubt, and fear. So why is it that a lot of us make decisions very slowly? We go back and forth. We go ask other people, hey, what do you think I should do? It's because there's two parts of our minds that make the life-changing decision. The first part 
is this conscious mind right here. And the conscious mind wants you to have your goal. The conscious mind is saying, yes, this can help me reach my goal. The second part right here is in your subconscious mind. And that is your paradigm. Your thinking and your behavioral habits that are programming you for your present results. They do not want to get uncomfortable. They do not want to change. So they give you worry. They give you doubt. They give you fear. So you will have this, yes, I know this will help me reach my goal. But I cannot do this because... And there goes your paradigm talking. This is not your heart. Your heart wants you to achieve whatever. Whatever song your heart wants you to play. This is so big. And this is why we have to train ourselves to make decisions quickly. And then stick to those decisions. So you know in your heart of hearts. What will help you reach your goal. But you're saying, I can't do that because blah, blah, blah. Or I can't do that now. For the most part, that logic is wrong. Remember, when we change our paradigms, the logic changes. You know, think about the Wright brothers. You know, the Wright brothers, they introduced us to a totally new kingdom the kingdom of flying you know the Wright brothers they were just a couple of bicycle mechanics can you imagine the criticism they went through you can't fly people been trying to do that for years <laughs> what do you think you're doing you know, the United States government, they launched a thing a few years back and they couldn't fly. And you really think you're going to make it work? You really think you got this? You cannot fly. But what happened when they got the airplane in the air and the world of flight became real? All of a sudden, our logic changed. Now we can go to Tokyo all the way to Houston. And it's not months in a boat. You can go from Tokyo to Houston in a matter of hours. Our logic changed. Now we don't think it's so silly to go get in an airplane and take off and go wherever we're going. So let's look at the Wright brothers. They made decisions quickly. And they did not go back on it. They got all kinds of criticism. They got all kinds of mud thrown in their face. They did not overthink the situation. Imagine if they overthought flying. Would we be as advanced as we are today if they would have overthought flying? I'm sure somebody would have, you know, uh, introduced us to the world of flight. Had it not been them, it would have been someone else. But will we be where we're at today? Probably not. We'd still be stuck a few years back. So, the moral of the story is make your decision. If you know that it's going to get you closer to your goal, make that decision and stick to it. Don't go back and forth. Stick to it. Okay, so... I have about 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to wrap this up. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about return of investment versus cost. When you are going towards your goal, are you investing 
and your goals? Or is it costing you? If it is costing you, you are not looking at it correctly. And when I'm going after my goal, I'm not looking at the cost. I'm looking at what am I going to get as a return on my investment. The time I put into practicing the piano, what is my return on investment? The time I spend composing music, what is my return on investment? The time that I put into performing, what is my return of investment? When I first started teaching piano, I just wanted to teach and loved seeing people, you know, learn songs and be proud of themselves and all of that, but I had absolutely no idea where I wanted to take this. I really did not understand cost versus return of investment. And now that I'm spending time in my group sessions, is that costing me? Does that cost me time? Whenever I spend time in my one-on-one -on -one piano lessons, is that costing me time? No, I am investing my time because the return of my investing time into my students is so much greater than the cost. My students are performing. My students are living fulfilled lives. And that is worth a whole lot more to me than just merely, oh, it cost me an hour. When making decisions, always think, is this going to get me closer to my goal? If it is, make that decision, then work out the details. You know, like my mother said, you, okay, so you don't know how much it's going to cost. Apply, figure it out. We'll, We'll figure out what we need to do. My mother had my back in that situation because she knew it was going to get me closer to my goal, what my heart of heart really, really wanted. So trust your intuition when you're making your goals. If you need to ask someone's opinion, ask someone who has already achieved that goal that you want or someone that knows what your goal is and knows that that will help you get closer to your goal or that will hinder you from getting closer to your goal. Don't go ask your family and friends who have not achieved any of your goals, have no clue where you're going, don't have the awareness to help you reach your goals. My mother had the awareness Oh, this will help her get closer to her goals. So what would my future self do today? Whenever I'm going towards my goal. Whenever I'm taking steps towards my goal and I need to make a decision. What would my future self do today? Would my future self say absolutely push through and do this? Would my future self be concerned with fears of criticism, present circumstances, etc.? When you make the right life changing decision, your goal is always on the other side. And when you make a life changing decision, this is where your mind will give you those creative ideas of how to make it work. You start to get those um, magnetic thoughts that we talked about. So, real quickly, I would like to invite you to make a decision that I have made that helped me become who I am and fulfill my dreams at the piano. And I know that it can help you too. Remember that 
what we talked about yesterday, there's a difference of just being interested in your goals and actually being committed to achieve your goals. When you're interested in your goals, you just do what's what? Comfortable. When you're interested in your goals, your paradigm is still controlling you. So you just do what's comfortable because the paradigm does not want you to become uncomfortable. So it's going to give you worry, doubt, and fear. When you're committed to doing your goals, when you're committed to going after that, you're going to push through those worries. You're going to push through those doubts. You're going to push through those fears. You're going to see the boogeyman in the closet as the boogeyman in the closet. You know, you're going to sit down and say, okay, this is my, oh my God, fear. But what's the worst that could happen? Okay, so that's like the actual worst that could happen. How will I survive? Okay, awesome. What's the best that can happen? And you push through. You make it happen. Um, you know, you make it happen as long as it's legal and doesn't hurt yourself or others, right? So I want to know here who is committed to achieving your goals within the next 6 to 12 months. You can put committed into the chat box if you're here with me live. If you're catching this on replay, you can feel free to put committed in the chat box. You know, who here is like game on? I'm ready to do what needs to be done to make my goals happen. I don't know what I didn't know, and now I know what I know, and I want my goals. Who is committed to changing your psychology to keep it from stopping you, to supporting you, to playing your goals? Okay, perfect. So I have two options um, after completing this workshop, and this workshop will be completed tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is the very last day, very last session, and once you have completed tomorrow's session, you have two options. Option one, you can take all of this uh, knowledge that you've learned here, go off, and apply this and see what happens. Option two, if you're like me, I hate to figure things out on my own because I know there will be times I will get stuck, I will need help. And I do not like wasting time or money making mistakes. I certainly like peace of mind, someone showing me those ropes, right? I like to have someone standing by me and it's like, this is what you do to achieve your goals. And someone who believes in me shows me the way, no, don't practice for two hours a day. Okay, only focus practice on this for 10 minutes. Okay, only, yeah, somebody helping me. Okay, we've got the wrong mindset here. Let's reprogram this mindset. So if that's you, I'd love to invite you to stay on with us for the next six months um, in our mentorship. We have a fabulous mentorship, and this mentorship is uh, based on the teachings by Bob Proctor. It's based on his um, course, Thinking Into Results. So we have a special offer for you, and that is for this master class only and what has happened in this master class is i've just given you lots of knowledge um you know you guys are probably like your heads are exploding um but the knowledge is always applied at your level of habit so there's the thinking and behavioral habits that are programmed at your present results so here's my little stick 
fit your person again. So your behavioral habits and your thinking are programmed by your paradigm. So it's right here in the subconscious mind. And I mentioned this earlier in the master class, but in order to change your habits, it takes about 20 to 60 days to change just one habit. So we're going to need a few months in order to see your results into fruition of your goals. So you don't get unmotivated, you don't get unstuck, and you have people helping you. So this is our special offer um, for the six months mentorship and it's based on the Thinking Into Results by Bob Proctor. It involves all the teachings by Bob Proctor in a step-by-step -step program that reprograms your thinking, shifting your paradigms so you can achieve your piano goals. So on top of the online program, you have the implementation structure as well as the beginner to advanced in six months course. So you have my weekly uh, mentorship and accountability sessions. The accountability is absolutely needed to bypass um, the mind that wants to keep you stuck in your current results. So what you get is community. Um, so what others are doing as performing pianists, these are people who have achieved performing. So as I mentioned earlier in the master class, you are the sum of the five people that you hang out with. The five people that you spend the most of your time with, that is what is normal to you. And that's what you're going to fit into. So if you're going to hang out with people who are already performing at the piano, we have um, what we call masterminds. And I love this structure because it means that on top of our one hour with me, you will have one hour brainstorm sessions with other students who have achieved your goals and others who are also going towards your goals. So whenever you come to one of those decisions and you're needing to make a decision on how to do this, you can go to the mastermind group. Um, this is something that is really starting um, next month. We'll be meeting uh, once a week for our mastermind sessions. And so you can bring your questions to that mastermind session and ask for feedback from other pianists. Pianists who are also working on what you're working on. Pianists who have maybe, you know, they're a little bit ahead of where you're at. Pianists who are maybe a little bit behind and they have questions that you can help them with. So this is a great structure because you have these brainstorm sessions with other students who have achieved your goals, others who are going for similar goals or bigger goals. So masterminds are great because if you're just having an issue with a strategy or something like that, you can bring it to the mastermind and there will be others that will help you with input. Um, so others will share ideas and also what they have done that helped them. Maybe you're having trouble with, I don't know, problem measures. And you just can't seem to get through these three measures. And someone else went through that exact song. They had trouble with those three measures. This is what they did. That way you're not stuck trying to figure out everything on your own. So there's a bonus for this masterclass. Um, the bonus is my very own Advanced Mindset Accelerator course. So this helps to build your confidence, but it's mixed with piano technique. And we talk about the proper ways to sit at the piano. We talk about the proper ways um, to uh, kind of 
rotate your wrist and different things. It's a lot of piano techniques. Um, so this is valued at $1,200. All of this with the bonus is $3,600. Um, but for the first five who join and they pay in full for the mentorship, the first five that pay in full for the mentorship, um, you will receive a free six months. So instead of just a six month mentorship, you get a whole year of mentorship. So that's, you know, you're hitting your goals probably three to four times um, within a year. So imagine that, that's just, you know, those quantum leaps, you're hitting big goals three to four times a year. So there are also installment options. I realize that that's a huge uh, chunk, but there's installment options. 600 down and then 600 for five months afterwards. Now, if you're already my student, you're already into the mentorship, this is not necessarily for you. This is, this is for people coming in. Um, so uh, I do enjoy, um, you know, for instance, James is here with us live. And he has been going through this um, mentorship for some time and he is just seeing you know his goals you know every few months he's seeing his goals so he is really doing great um, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop the link to the installments and the link um, to the pay in full. I'm going to go ahead and pop that into the chat. Let's see. Okay, there's that. Okay, and so if you're catching this on the replay and Facebook, um, you can click on those links. Um, if you're um, joining us on the replay in YouTube, you can also click on those links, um, the link to the installments, the link to pay in full. Um, so some people will want to sign up with me. They feel that I can help them go towards their goal. So for those of you that know that this can help you fulfill that goal, and the answer is yes. That is the first feeling that yes, she can help me. You know, go ahead and click that link and start registering. Don't wait, make that decision from your goal fulfilled and from the connection to what is possible. When you start registering today and you join us, um, I promise you that you will not regret it. You know, this will be the best decision of your life to go towards your goal. And if you know already that this is for you, I want you to go ahead and uh, click the link and start registering. This was by far the very best decision that I ever made in myself was to invest in myself, my future, my goals. It was by far the very best thing that I ever did. Also, tomorrow we have our very, very, very last um, session. And this is going to be a little teaching. And then we have our Q&A session. So if you have a question, um, type it into the chat box. You can do that here in Zoom. If you are in uh, Facebook, I do have a post. It's called Questions for Joan in the um, Facebook group. So go into that post and you can post your question. You can post your question underneath um, this video replay. If you are in um, YouTube, you can also post your question in the comment section. The same thing, I will collect those questions and I will answer them in the session tomorrow. So you can have a life at the piano 
that you want. And I want to remind you of that. So thank you so much for being here with me live. Thank you so much for watching the replays. Um, and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for the very, very last session. So make the decision for your goal and take care and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.